Number two, resurrection establishes our justification from sin as if we never sinned. Romans 4, verse 22 and 23. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, that's in prophecy, if we believe on him, the rest of Jesus our Lord from the dead. And so the psalm is saying that afar off in Psalm 32 verse 1 and 2, blessed is the man. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputed not in equity, but in whose, in whose spirit there is no God. In Psalm 130, verses 3 and 4, If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquities, O Lord, who shall stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. That's what resurrection offers. It is the establishment of our justification as Jesus bore our sins and transgressions on the cross. So we are now the righteousness of God in Christ. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made righteous of God in him. Is a justifier. Number three, resurrection establishes our membership of the household of God. What is security? Amen. <laughs> what is security? It establishes our membership. Of the household of God. Hebrews chapter 2, 10 and 11. For it became him for whom were all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. For both he that sanctified and he that has sanctified that one for which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren. So we are members of God's own family. Ephesians 2 verse 9 verse 19 He said now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And in that house, Psalm 132 and verse 13 to 16, for the Lord has chosen Zion as desired for his habitation. This is my rest forever, and here will I dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision, I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will also clothe her priest with salvation, and her saints shall keep shouting aloud for joy. Amen. That's what happens in his household. Amen. Blessed is the man whom thou choosest. Psalm 65 verse 4. Whom thou causest to approach unto thee that he may dwell in thy court. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house even of thy holy temple. So membership of his household is not just theoretical. You are satisfied with the goodness of his house. No child of a millionaire gets on the street begging when it's not prodigious. When he didn't walk away from his father's house like the prodigal son did. He said they shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house even of thy holy temple. Hallelujah. 
For if a man provide not for his house, 1 Timothy 5, 8. And especially for those of his own house. He has denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. So we have security as members of his household. Security against every assault of the wicked. Can I hear your amen? amen. Number four. Resurrection establishes our open access to the revelation of the truth. The veil in the temple was torn in twain. Amen. Amen. Providing access to everyone into the holiest of all. Where we have the tables of the covenant. Where we have manna in the golden pot. Where we have the rod of Aaron that bodies. Nothing dies in there. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 9 verse 4. So we gain access into the holiest of all by his resurrection. And we saw that in very clean way here in uh, Matthew 27, 50 to 53, that was read earlier. He said, and when Jesus had cried again with a loud voice, he yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain. So, access became open for all. Assessing the treasures of Hebrews chapter 9 verse 4. Praise God. And we saw when they came out of the grave. Then opened he the understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Amen. Then opened he the understanding that they might understand the scriptures. That is the raw, literate interpretation of the veil in the temple that was turned into him. Can I hear your amen? amen? Next to salvation, revelation is the greatest asset of the believer. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They are saved, but they are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We we'll see a 4 6. Isaiah 5 13, my people are going into captivity because they have no knowledge. Next to salvation, the greatest asset of a believer is revelation. Remember, nobody could step into the Holy of Holies without blood. So he shed his blood to open the veil so we can all step into the holiest of all where we assess revelation like water. <laughs> revelation flowing like a river. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. And every revelation is revolutionary in nature. Every. Do I have the time to tell stories? Of what revelation has wrought in my life and in this ministry. <laughs> I'm not talking about information. I'm talking about revelation. The one that the Holy Ghost unveils. Arise shine because your light has come. And the glory. Of the Lord is not upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, the truth shall be seen upon thee, and the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy rising. Revolutionary. Turns things around supernaturally. Number five, resurrection quickens our mortal bodies unto health and vitality. <laughs> Not everybody on the street possesses human body. There's a spiritual body. 
And I said, nature of body. If the spirit of him that raised Christ from the dead is in you. Romans 8, 11. He that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal body by his spirit that dwells in you. There is a spiritual body and there is a natural body. There is the body he said that there, there is natural body and a spiritual body. There is a body terrestrial and there is a body celestial. When the spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you, he turns your body to a spiritual body. Can I hear your amen? Jesus breathed on them. As my father has sent me, so send I you. Peace be unto you. He breathed on them. The spirit that raised him from the dead came through to them. Turned their body to spiritual body. You know, Bible history will tell us that uh, John the below was banished to the eyes of Patmos because they couldn't kill him. They dropped him in boiling oil. He just came out, can't we? <laughs> Amen. That body has been spiritualized. And that's no big deal because he saw that in the figure. And say that measure cannot bed nego. That the fire had no effect on them. That's not, that's not a natural body. That's a spiritual body. And Jesus came to make that available to all. So every believer is entitled to a spiritual body that is immune to sickness and disease. Hallelujah. That is immune. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 4, the Bible says, Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. If any man be in Christ a new creature, all things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And all these things of God. Hallelujah. So, resurrection entitles us to possess a spiritual body that cannot be assaulted by the devil or his agents. And that's one gift you are living here with today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Number six, resurrection unveils access to God's plan and purpose for our lives. The resurrected Christ came to Paul on his way to Damascus on his satanic mission. So, so, why persecuted thou me? What thou, Lord, is I'm Jesus. The resurrected Lord is a hard thing for thee to kick against the pricks. He encountered God's plan and purpose for his life through that awesome encounter with the resurrected Christ. Today must mark the end of confusion Amen. in everyone's life. Amen. As you are says, glory to God. 
God's glorious plan for your life. After Jesus rose from the dead, Peter, son of Jonas, do you love me? You don't know what you are here for. Feed my lamb. You don't know what you are here for. Feed my sheep. You don't know what you are here for. Feed my sheep. So resurrection provides us access into God's glorious plan and purpose for our lives. You are going to encounter him. Amen. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. Amen. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. Amen. Number seven. Resurrection releases believers from all forms of captivities. All forms of captivities. Again, Matthew 27, 50 to 53. And the graves were opened. And many bodies of the same which slept arose. And came out of the graves. After his resurrection. Woo. <laughs> Praise God. They came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Everybody under the sound of my voice, you are coming out of obscurity into the limelight of life. Deliverance from all forms of captivities. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? So it's a lifeline out of every bandage of hell. In Colossians 1.13 the Bible said who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Number eight, resurrection offers peace that passes all understanding. Every time he showed up to them, peace be unto you. Resurrection came along with the peace of God. That passes all understanding. John chapter 20 and verse 18. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, Sunday, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. Came Jesus and stood in the midst and said unto them, Peace be unto you. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Resurrection is the seal of our peace Amen. in life. Go next verse. Then said Jesus again, Peace be unto you. As my father has sent me, even so send I you. Peace. Said to them again, peace. That means resurrection connotes our access to the peace of God that passes all understanding. I pray that the resurrection of all peace will be part of your gifts today. Amen. In John 14, 27, he was speaking of that in prophecy. My peace Peace I live with you. My kind of peace I give unto you. The kind that is fast asleep in the midst of the storm. Not as the world give it. Not the kind of peace the world is talking about. Give it unto me. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let him be afraid. And he came out of the grave in his resurrection and offered us that peace. So the peace of God is your portion or my portion. Amen. Today marks the end of every form of stress Amen. on your life. Amen. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. 
He said, and the peace of God that passes all knowledge shall keep your mind and heart, your heart and mind through Christ. The peace of God that is inexplainable but undeniable. You are just at ease. Hallelujah. Finally, resurrection repositions believers for dominion in the adventure of life. Ephesians 2, verses 5 and 6. Even when we are dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ. By grace he has saved and has raised us up together with Christ and made us sit together in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Raised us up together. And now we are told in Ephesians 1, 20 and 21. Maybe I should just read 17 to 21. It's going to be very enlightening. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That was Paul praying for the Ephesian church. That the eyes of understanding may enlighten that he may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who, who believe according to the working of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Far above all oh, principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. Amen. And verse 22, and has put all things under his feet. How many things? Oh. And gave him to be the head over all things to the church. That's where we are. We are seated together with Christ in heavenly places far above. So resurrection is the seal of our, of our dominion on earth. We have been repositioned for dominion. Ooh. Man. Now, listen to me. This is where the devil has a problem. You know something about the word of God? It lives and abides forever. When I saw that light from the ministry of Smith Wigglesworth, he has gone to heaven. He was in heaven. <laughs> yes, after he's gone to heaven. The word of the Lord liveth and abideth forever. Liveth and abideth forever. The word came to me like fire from the ministry of one that has gone to heaven. You can't stop the word. His word rose swiftly. I mean, Smith, Wiggles' word was in heaven. I only saw his picture in my life. I wasn't there when he was here. Amen. And see how that word is working today. Now I'm telling you the truth. There is no agent of the devil under heaven that does not fear Christ in me. All over the world. By the light I caught through the ministry of one that was already in heaven. That's why the church can be killed. <laughs> you know, we were told in those basic science times that matter can neither be created nor destroyed. Jesus is that matter. <laughs> Amen. He gave him to be head over all things to the church. Everybody, everywhere, inside them know Jesus is Lord. Yes, 
Religion may forbid them from saying it, but they know. If you know how many unbelievers are watching now, you'll be surprised. Around the world. They just sit down in their room. <laughs> Amen. Oh, man. It's just go, go out. <laughs> Amen. Because the word of God runneth swiftly. Yes, Glory to God. His word uh, lives and abides forever. First Peter 1, 23. Being born again, not by corruptible seed, but by the incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Forever. <laughs> Do you know that also Jesus Smith had gone to heaven when I caught the light of Matthew 6, 33 from his book. The man God uses. <laughs> now what? What to hear me teach now by reason of the um, <laughs> technology of the day, you'll be hearing it if Jesus studies 1,000 years when I'm gone. And you'll be taking note as if I was the one teaching you directly. His word lives and abides forever. Let anybody walking against the church just rethink. You, you can't kill this matter. <laughs> you can't. I will build my church and the gates of hell. Not gates of men. Gates of hell. Gates of hell. Not gates of men. So our dominion is sealed by his resurrection. Come on, I'll give the Lord a big hand of praise. Your dominion, my dominion is sealed by we are repositioned for dominion against the wishes of the devil and his agents through his resurrection. Through his resurrection. We were raised up together with him at his resurrection. Are meant to sit together with him in heavenly places located far above all principality and power and dominion and might and every name that is named, not only in this world but also in that which is to come. Hmm. And has made him to be head over all things to the church. That's why at his name, every name bows. Yes, sir. At his name, every name bows. Yes, so this noisome pestilence, empty barrel, noisome pestilence, in the name of Jesus, the resurrected Christ, yes, your siege over human life is over. Yes, your noise is silenced. Yes, your defeat is eternal. In the name of Jesus. In conclusion, resurrect, the resurrection of Christ offers us a sevenfold redemptive package according to Revelation 5.12. Let's go to verse 9, please. And then come down to 12. And they sang, they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seas thereof, for thou wast slain, and hast redeemed us unto our God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Same price. Same price. There is no racial discrimination here. And has made us unto our God as priests and kings, and we shall reign on the earth. Not in a town, on the earth. Wherever you go on the earth, you reign. Yes, and I heard and heard the voice of many angels run about the throne and the beasts and the elders. The number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. And say with a loud voice, what is the Lamb that was slain? And slain and rose to receive for us power.
power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessings. What a gift. He ascended and gave gifts unto men. And the gifts are itemized here. Power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and blessings. Ooh. All power is given unto me. I give to you power to tread upon servants and scorpions, for all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Power to walk in dominion. Amen. Amen. Rule thou in the midst of the enemies. Thy people shall be willing to deal thy power. Power. Riches. He became poor that with his poverty might be made rich. He opens us up into the realm, into our worthy place in redemption. Worthy place. By unveiling to us the tables of the covenant that empowers the believers for wealth. He is the wisdom and the power of God and he now resides in us. So we are fountains of wisdom. And by wisdom, kings reign and princes decree justice. Then strength. We now have a spiritual body. Amen. <laughs> the spirit that raised Christ from the dead is now in us. And it keeps alive our mortal body. Oh no. We saw this picture in Isaiah 25, verse 6 to 8. Amen. He said, For the Lord of hosts, and in this month shall the Lord of hosts make unto all people a feast of fat things, a feast of wines on the lees, of fat things full of marrow, of wines on the lees were refined. He said, And he will destroy in this mountain the face of the covering cast over all people. And the way that is spread over all the nations. We saw these are prophetic words concerning Christ. And what happens? And they will swallow up death in victory. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Lord will wipe away tears from all our faces. And the reproach of his people shall he take away from off all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. So shame and reproach is no longer your portion. Amen. Shame and reproach is no longer the portion of your family. Amen. Shame and reproach was wiped away at his resurrection. Thank you, Jesus. And glory. He opened the understanding of my understanding the scriptures. And arise and shine because your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is upon you. And blessings. Yes, you dim us unto our God. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. He said, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And made for, being made a cause for all his reason. Cursed is everyone that hung it upon the tree. That the blessings of Abraham might come unto the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So he went through the cross. He rose again to liberate us from the cause of life. So we are now entities of his blessings. Can I hear your amen? Amen. How shall I cause whom God has not caused? And how shall I defy whom the Lord has not defied? The Lord has given me a commandment to bless and he has blessed and I cannot reverse it. Glory to God. What he said to Abraham is I will bless them that bless thee and name that causes thee I will cause. So his blessings are irreversible. Thank you Jesus. Now everybody should expect any kind of grave. Every kind of grave that is shot in anyone. To open up right now. Amen. That's what he came to do. And you're walking into liberty. Amen. Your glorious liberty. Amen. Your glorious liberty. Amen. Also note that when Jesus rose from the dead. The first thing he did. Among others. 
was to serve communion. Amen. <laughs> so the word came to light from John 6, 48 to 58. And in 57, I mean 53, 54, if you don't, he said, I'm that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which came down from heaven that the man may eat thereof and not die. <laughs> I'm the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread which I will give him is my flesh, which I will give unto the life of the world. The Jews therefore strove among them, how can this man give us his flesh? He must be eccentric. <laughs> then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. You mean we are dead and we are hearing you? What kind of man is it? Now, whosoever eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life. Yes. Has eternal life. Yes. No longer human life. Has eternal life. Yes. And I will raise him up on the last day. Has eternal life. So you are partaking of eternal life. Yes. This is eternal life for the new table. The same way you be living in heaven, you will start living that now. Amen. For as the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me, or he shall live like me. Like me. John 14, and verse 9, Jesus said, Have I been so long with you, Philip, and you don't know who I am? He that has sent me, has sent the Father. And now saith he, show me the Father. So, from today, whosoever sees you has sent Christ. Sin free, Amen. sickness free, Amen. evil thought free, Amen. fear free, Amen. practical dominion in all areas of life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Where well, there is healing power here. There is deliverance power here. There is escape power here. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your right hand, everybody. And give him glory, give him praise, give him glory, give him praise. 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 Give him glory. Amen. Amen. At his birth, man brought gifts to him. At his resurrection, he gave gifts. How many are returning with their gifts today? Yes, Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What an awesome God. In Acts chapter 1, verse 3. Jesus showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs. Being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Our God is the God of times and seasons. He makes all things beautiful. In his time. As far as your eyes can see. Unto you will I give it. God showed me this many years ago. That there is. An ordained reenactment. Of 40 days. Of season of infallible proofs. After every. Resurrection celebration. So we are set. For the next set of wonders. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just before. We proceed. Very quickly, there are people here today that are under the sound of my voice and watching on television around the nations of the world and our various channels of transmission. And you are not born again. This is one opportunity you cannot afford to miss. And I'd like to pray with you. Now, some are say, but I've been walking zigzag, unstable as water. Look warm, neither cold nor hot. You want to rededicate your life to Christ. 
I'll be praying for these two groups at the same time. So wherever you may be, anywhere around the world, that you'd like me to pray this prayer with you. On this resurrection celebration day, which will be a turning point in your life forever. Wherever you are, please raise your right hand up and I'll pray with you. And pray this simple prayer of faith after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus. I accept you today as my Lord and my Savior. I believe you died for me. On the third day, you rose again for my justification. Lord Jesus, forgive me all my sins today. I accept you as my Lord and I will serve you all the days of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring me back to the faith. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now, I pray over you in the name of Jesus. Everyone, I just pray. Be blessed of the Lord. I cover each of you with the blood of Jesus and welcome to God's own family. You'll never miss your steps in the race. You'll make it up to the end. You'll make heaven at the end of your journey. In the name of Jesus Christ, so shall it be. Please let us know of your redemption story. Let's know of your salvation testimony. And get on the testimony lines that we have and communicate with us. That is the greatest miracle of all miracles. The salvation of your soul. But today, you are returning with the gifts of resurrection. Amen. Speaking actively in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Let's listen to the reading of an epistle for this season. 